pulled people. Uh, this morning we're going to cook uh, not 11 as advertised, but we've, uh, we've changed some units around um, because we were doing the assessor and the IQ qualification. So we've got a couple. So we've changed the unit now, and it's the team we'll be doing this morning equality and diversity. <laughs> equality and diversity has been wafted around for a long time. Uh, and a lot of attention has been put to it, a lot of um, documentary evidence that uh, discrimination of no sort should take place. How it actually works is difficult to put a finger on. One of the problems is that you can have all the policies and procedures in the world, but in the classroom um, you've got a class of mixed ability or mixed gender or whatever, and you've got to teach them. Now, teaching can't take place unless there is mutual respect between the student and the teacher. So that equality is there implicitly in the, uh, the situation of teaching uh, before you start. But well, things that have been added on for other reasons uh, have made it more of a complex issue for a lot of people, and they say, oh, yeah, okay, well, what does it actually mean? Schools have their own equal, equal option diversity of policies, uh, and, you know, reading those can probably enlighten you a little. But the actual terms of what you do in the classroom is a different thing. So, you're already, as I said, you're already covering some of that. So, we're going to look at unit. Uh, 13, and I'm going to look at it first. I'll just bring that up. That's it, Lord. We can look at um, the first learning objective, which is to understand the key features of culture which promotes equality, and a culture which promotes equality and diversity. A culture has to have, for a start, an equality and diversity policy. Yeah. So, it asks you to define the meanings of equality and diversity in the UK context, analyze the benefits of promoting. Define legislation, employment regulations, and codes of practice relevant to the promotion of equality and valuing diversity. That is in a general sense. We're looking at it from an educational point in this unit to, to a certain degree. And again, the blanket cover is in here, not just the educational part of it. So the second part for Learning objective two is understand the importance of promoting quality and value diversity in lifelong learning. As you know, we've got schooling from six, seven years old, uh, that goes right through until um, 16, and then 17 to 19, we've got higher education, and 19 plus, we've got either university education or further education and higher education. Those are split into different areas, um, of course, apprenticeship to practical side of things, and also you've got the academic side of things for people that are going to do qualifications for business, same as you're doing now, to, uh, some of the people are doing now to, uh, with uh, the college, or it will be to practical tests and qualifications of that time. Each of those areas will require a different approach to equality and diversity. So understanding and understand the importance of supporting it. In earlier units, you've covered uh, classroom, um, 
probably with the fast food, the fast food um, security. Some of that we'll be able to cross reference, so I'll come to that later. Um, that we'll be able to cross reference across to other units that you've already completed. Excellent practice in providing individual learning information. Now, quite often we'll do this during the uh, initial assessment stage. Um, it can be actions you can take to value particular individual learners. Uh, it may be that you've got learners with a particular problem. And that reflect on promotion of quality and diversity can return us from harm. Well, again, that feeds into the bullying uh, part of um, the classroom guidance. Uh, and again, you'll have covered some of that already. 3.1, be able to promote equality and value diversity. Use communication strategies that promote equality and diversity. This is how you communicate. Analyze how your own behavior can impact on an organization's culture in relation to equal diversity. Now, your own behavior is sometimes automatic. You will have your own idea of what it should be. Uh, obviously, you need to make sure that that is in alignment with the school or college that you work in. Um, but yeah, look at how you actually react. How do you deal with um, students that have little English, for instance? Um, and you know, we will really struggle during the class. Some of this is. Um, a move because a lot of educationists say that uh, students shouldn't be put under that pressure by putting them into classes with students that are well ahead of them, and certainly in, in language terms. Um, and this is the difficulty uh, that teachers are left with because management have not dealt with that and put a class together uh, that would actually assist the school uh, in promoting the language so that they could then fall into mainstream classes without a problem. This, of course, isn't the case with higher education, where you'll get students or young people that come into this country abroad and very little English. Um, obviously, the idea will be to get them to a certain stage before they go into um, you know, mainstream courses. And in fact, a lot of the higher education courses require a certain standard of or they can be registered on those courses. Understand how to help others in the promotion of equality and diversity. This is working together with other, other teachers, uh, putting together plans and obviously talking about the students that you've got and dealing with any issues that have arisen uh, so that you're all aware of the situation and it helps your colleagues and the colleagues should help you in, in reverse. Um, if you've got particular issues with students that you all uh, have at some team. Five is be able to review your own contribution. Um, this is a reflectory one, like each of the things you've done before, have a reflection stage, um, looking at your own strengths in promoting it, evaluate the impact of your own practice, identify areas for personal development in promoting equality and valuing diversity. A lot of times this can be done by reading um, and there are, oh, there's a myriad of, of, of material out there on the net or in books that will offer suggestions in terms of how you go about this operation. The purpose of the unit is to enable the learner to understand to promote equality and value diversity. Learners will understand how to work with others and do this and review the contribution to their own practice. Uh, a lot of, even if you're going, as I mentioned earlier, programs now, they have a separate unit now uh, for, um, it's called diversity and working with others. And um, this is, uh, in addition to their programs that have made 
sure that this is embedded to the program. This unit is on the bit of our new overarching professional standards for teachers, tutors, and trainers in the lifelong learning centre. That was back in 2007. There's um, guidance for developing an assessment of in the unit. If appropriate, don't need it. Official assessment requirements specified by the sector or regulation body, there are none for this, this particular one. What I will do now is look at these um, units or, or elements of the unit in detail. Now. What we'll look at is where there's a crossover of evidence I've mentioned already. Um, what we can do to um, cross-reference work in that world for that. But it's, um, how can I say? Because it's a slow process, um, some of the wordage is different. One or two of the actual um, requirements in there uh, are, shall I say, not quite the same. So what happens is um, you have, um, I'll put on, this is cross, but check, check against unit one, whatever, yeah, um, to make sure that it is exactly the same and you don't have anything to add. Well, look at this one. No. Some reason my computer being usually slow. Oh, I was a bit quicker than usual. Said he's not loaded yet. <laughs> this is the assignment from you can see on all the units. Uh been these before. Gosh, it is very small in this moment. A little bit of damage on one of them. Oh, there we are. Oh, there we are. Oh, Again, it said define the meanings of equality and diversity in the UK context. Because obviously, equal legislation is around in other countries, um, but it may be not in the same format, it may not go as far as it does in the UK, it may even go further. Um, it depends, certainly depends on the country. And how it's actually worked in the real world is somewhat different, right? So, um, review equal legislation, I've put there for that one. Uh, equal legislation, yeah. Equal to diversity are covered by the law. So really, you just need to look at those and look at what their legislation actually says for your response to that. Yeah. I really just need to put a piece <clears throat> about that. Unit 2 is analyze the benefits of promoting equality and diversity for individual learners. Now this cross refers to Unit 1, Learning Objective um, 4.2. Your explanation needs to be expanded into analysis. Now that's why Grand verbs here, analyze. Yeah, that's justified. You just say what it is. So, if you have something, then you, you maybe need to expand what you've done at 4.2, uh, but it will be in, in that area. So, that will be look at what you've written. If it doesn't cover this, then actually you can put, see Unit 1 4.2, you don't need to write anything extra for that. If I mention employment regulations, court of practice, refer to the promotion of uh, equality and doing diversity. Identify the UK legislation, we we'll scroll through it, and I, again, it's defined, so it's just you can see what it is.
Do you put on? Reflect on the promotion of equality and diversity can protect from risk or harm. This seems to be part of Unit 1, L4.2 and 4.3. Check your response there, like I said. There may be some different, I think you oh, force you to put some extra work in to actually cover exactly what it's saying here. Explainable practice in providing individual learners with information. This cross refers directly to Unit 1, <coughs> LOs. 2.1 and 2.3. You will have that already. Oops, a bit too far. Use <laughs> 3.1. Use communication strategies to promote people of disability. Cross refer to Unit 1 and Objective 4.1. Behavior, how you have an impact on an organization's culture in relation to equality and diversity. Read and respond. Now, I've been through the reading material that we've got up there, and some of it will cover parts of this, but not all. So, I actually added a new piece for you on mute to read. In fact, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to get up now and we'll, we'll look at that. Let's go back from here. I'm not sure what it is. Well, I picked out a piece that was written at so uh, and it was. Again, for some reason, it's jumped uh, onto a different. I don't know why it's not. I'm not expected on it too, fortunately. Um, we'll get back to that in a second. up to half a minute for stuff to load. As I've said, he, he got to, and, and diverse is a very wide subject um, and it requires um, quite a bit of detail uh, to make sure that uh, your, your college is complying with the, uh, with the program and the, um, that's by yourself. Most of the um, legislation is covered by the documents within the, um, within the college or school. Uh, 
uh, and more make a big impact on how you respond. I can understand. Maybe not. Now, when this this piece starts out, it starts to talk as though you're going to get a history lesson, um, and a lot of the, the detail of the of the two stories are relevant to the, the information he puts in later on. I'm going to do a fairly quick phrase with this. I'm going to go through. It's a continuing education introduction, introduction, like Ted Fleming. Again, he talks about um, in 1347, the king was on the city of Hall against the English on the third uh, to lift the siege and starvation, put the people to surrender the English. Said, if six leaders will be, give themselves up, presume them to be hanged. Six of the wealthiest leaders were a calibre of volunteers. And walked out almost naked to face certain death. In 1888, the Lord Arm celebrated their favourite with a wonderful sculpture, which you can see on the left. Philip, the wife of Philip, pleaded on their behalf and they were spurred. It would have been, she said, a bad omen for her and the child to whom she was about to give birth. Forces were expressed over these events 650 years ago. The discourse of the king, the talk of war, treaties, death, and procedures. The discourse of the queen talking about mercy and people, with everything taking second place to the welfare of the child. Two similar discourses continue to thrive in our conversations today. I will take an example from three years ago in order to not to be too controversial, even though we could find more recent examples. In uh, our school buses in Navan, uh, in Ireland, and uh, they were just about to come up to some um, exams. One of the questions in the, in the exam um, was, Travelling to school and buying books. And there was a deep sense of shock over the question of the Minister of Education. Uh, we'll be speaking to the Exams Commission with responsibility for the papers as soon as possible. That's okay. And it seems to be sentimental in those two stories. Uh, there are two discourses, two languages being spoken. This is a bit that comes in now. One is, all about what's actually happening. Yeah, um, it talks about um, the people. Everybody was shocked, and um, the other talks about the language, the system. Talk to the exams commission. It talks about we have the same school service in Europe. Statistically, our children are safe on buses. We have spent thirteen million on whatever. The bottom line is system speak about procedures, regulations, costs, a preoccupation with policies and guidelines, a rejection of reports and arguments. The bottom line in the people speak is about care, concern, mercy, compassion, relationships, and embracing the emotional reactions and feelings. So the educator's role and the trainer's work in the tension between the language productivity and the language of care seems the views of through throughput and efficiency on the one hand and giving someone time they need to learn and grow on the other. Of course the whole system of speak is wrong and flawed, but how people speak is unproblematic. 
this is what I said to you right at the beginning. There's a big difference between putting policies, procedures, laws in place, and what's actually happening on the ground. And that's why it's a particularly difficult subject. And this is why I chose this because it, it highlights that difference between what's been, what is being asked to happen on one hand, and what you are as a teacher are being asked to produce. And the actual way that you've got to do it to make sure that all those students that you've got are cared for, yeah, and make sure that you give them the time that they need to do things individually. That there's a an immediate crossover of argument between the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down onto middle for you now to read right through. I'm not going to read right through it at this stage now. Um, I'm going to cover uh, a little bit more about laws, yeah? Education and trainers uh, talking about the systems of the world and people of the world. And we come in with regulations, laws, targets, procedures, keeping account of finance, tracking, quality assurance. All is system stuff. Yeah? We are paid by the system. So, learners are dealing with always complex human dilemmas and challenges and becoming more adult, more human to learn people stuff. I'm not going to read any more of this now. Um, you can read that for yourselves. What I'm going to go back to is something that happened, um, I think, now. it's a number of years ago now, but I, I was working in a mainstream college dealing with apprenticeships uh, in the engineering sector. I am actually a, a mechanical engineer by profession. And in that time, I had a student a learner who was working well at work. Um, one of my jobs was to go into the company and speak to them and see that he was doing okay and do a review every what, every six or eight weeks. Uh, but on, on one day a week, he had to attend college to do his further education course. That went in line with the apprenticeship process and completed all the the facets of the apprenticeship. And it had been reported that he'd been missing on several occasions from uh, college, because not been there. I counselled the student um, and asked him, you know, what was the problem? Is there, is there something about the course he didn't like, what he was worried about? And he said, well, I've got a problem. Um, is that I live at home with him when I've got a younger sister, and she works on the college day. Um, quite often, and I have to stop at home to look after my sister. So I said, mm, it isn't your responsibility, really, to look after your sister. It's your mum's responsibility to make sure that happens. Um, you want me to have a word with her? So he said, well, yeah, uh, I would do it. Because I, I like going to college. I enjoy the course. And I was doing okay, but she got this new job and it meant, meant I had to make a of it out, so it's okay. And you were in time until me. So we were in time and I went down to his house with him and met his mother and she made a cup of tea and we sat and talked. And I found that really it wasn't his responsibility to do this, it was her responsibility to sort it out for him. That's all that he did attend college. His mother became upset, and I had to sort of tread carefully around. And I said to Luke, I believe that the, the, all the teachers at college have a crash. Uh, uh, they can leave the children during the day when they're teaching. Uh, if I arranged for him to bring you to college with him, I'm not saying I can do this now, but I'll try and make arrangements for him to bring you to, school, to college with him and drop her off in the crash until um, you can take her back. She said, well, I'm always home by dinner time. So I said, right, well, they've got a lunch break. He can bring you home. And that was how we got around it. And that was 
practical solution and it was dealing with equality and diversity because of the situation he was in at home was, was stopping him going to, into cottage and therefore um, he was out know, through no fault of his own. <coughs> Fortunately, he was able to find a way around. And quite often, if you're in a similar situation, it doesn't necessarily mean exactly like that, but a, a similar situation where there are, there are outside influences that are causing a student or other learners' issues, talking with others, discussing it with your management, uh, discussing it with other tutors, is always beneficial because somebody will say, oh, what you could do is this, or I could suggest that, if we can work this way. And nine times out of ten, the solution is found. I'm going to go back. And as I say, um, the two speaks are very well shown up the piece. One is dealing with people and the other is dealing with, uh, what shall I say, uh, laws, rules and regulations. You see when I'm picking these from I'm on unit 13 and that is in I'm on the Moodle platform and so access um, and again I will tell you of this having access to Moodle is vital to you being able to access the information uh, this particular lesson has been recorded uh, that will be recorded down onto Moodle and uh, you will be able to access it there to do any part of it or watch any part of it again. Uh, sometimes <clears throat> it's just not possible to attend on a particular day um, and that's fine. Um, but obviously you have to put the schedule out because there are other teachers um, using other lessons using this platform so that they have to um, work to a schedule. And sometimes, obviously, that doesn't like, meet everybody else's. Situation. Uh, and, it, you know, obviously, they're not able to attend all day. But, but make sure, if any of you haven't got access or don't know how to access Moodle, please contact, email, whatever, uh, and we'll send you the details back on how to access that. Uh, for those of you that's completed work on uh, on any of the units, uh, please by all means send those in, um, and you can actually deposit them on Google for me to pick up, or you can email them to me. I don't mind which way you do it, uh, because I, I need to start looking at the assessment of those now, um, so that we can move forward as fast as possible. So I'll thank you all for attending. And I'll close the meeting now.